bring your special persona to the reading. That's the only way we get cast. So if we know who we are and we can figure out what is going on in the scene and we're off book and we're ready, nerves are going to be there. I'm not saying you're not going to be nervous. But the stakes in the scene take the nerves out because if you're nervous, the character's nervous. If you need something in the scene, the character needs something in the scene and then it comes alive. Sí, agarra. Camina, está sí. samulada. Camina, sí. ay, mamita, camina, anda. Camina, sí. Dale un poquito para acá. Hey, welcome to Common Sense Mamita. I'm Lydia Nicole and if it's your first time and you are interested in acting tips, showbiz insights, and life lessons, you've come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell so you can get all the notifications. Well today, let me tell you, you guys are in for a super duper treat. I am so happy to introduce you to Ken Lerner. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Welcome Great to Ken. See you. So, let's start right away. Where did you grow up at? In Brooklyn. Okay. In Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Lots of Italians, lots of Jews. Growing up in Brooklyn, what got you interested in acting? My brother. My brother was an actor in high school and uh, then went on a Fulbright scholarship to England. And he was always doing it. And I said, well, if he's doing it, I can do it. And so I started studying. And I studied with Stella Adler in New York. While she was alive. Would have been yes, tough I studied to study with Stella when she, when she was alive, right. too. Yes. Exactly. And then uh, was working in New York, off-Broadway, and uh, off-off-Broadway, and dinner theater and stuff. And then I came out here and started working. What made you decide to leave New York, venture out to Hollywood? It's called money. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could do television and film uh, in L.A., and in New York, it was really tough to break through, so I was doing free theater. And I, oh, okay. I came out and immediately started working on the biggest show on television, Happy Days. Wow. Yeah. And so then once you got out here, you started working right away. Right away. After that, you came out here. Did you start taking acting classes while uh, you were out here? When I first came out, I started, uh, I was working, and then I heard about this fabulous teacher. Um, well, actually, there were a few. So I was studying with Peggy Fury. Yes. Who was a wonderful, wonderful And teacher. how was that experience? Well, it was interesting because Peggy has narcolepsy. So Peggy would be watching a scene, and they had a designated nudger because occasionally she'd be watching, and then... But she was sharp and right there, and she was fabulous. Called the Loft Theater, really good people, and um, studied with her for a while. I mean, she was great. Where did you go from there? To our wonderful teacher. Who's to, that? That's Roy London. And Roy was just the best. And he was um, inspirational and just the kind of person that really brought out the best in, in everyone. The wonderful thing was I was working a lot in television. And Roy kind of noticed and said, you know, a lot of my students are studying with me, but they're not working so you must have some tips in terms of auditioning. So he said, why don't you teach for me? And it was a blessing and a curse. The blessing was I got to make money teaching. The curse was I couldn't be in the class anymore because all my students were in the same class with me and that wouldn't have worked because it was weird. And so I started teaching for Roy. What were a couple of tips that you got from him as an actor that you still use today as a teacher? Be myself. Just bring who I am to everything that I do and bring the best me. And then also making positive choices, using substitutions, figuring out the text analysis. Roy was a playwright, so he was incredible figuring out uh, the material. And then anytime I was on television, Roy would call afterwards and give me a critique. And, you know, I remember distinctly when I did, I did one show, I can't remember what it was, but he called me and said, that's what you play, do that, you're every man, and you're going to have an incredible career in your 40s. And he was totally right. In my 40s, I never stopped working. He was so insightful, and because he was a playwright, the text analysis was so important, you know. So for someone who's listening, who doesn't, who would like to be an actor and knows nothing about what we just talked about mm -hmm. uh, what is text analysis well the writer writes a script and then the actor gets the script and then the actor has to figure out what the heck the writer wrote 
and then we have to break it down into beats and we have to figure out what we want and it's a problem that actors have because actors um, want to act, they want to be emotional, they want to do all of this stuff but sometimes uh, they're not servicing the material and Roy was big time into servicing the material, figuring out what the material was about, putting yourself into it and then bringing the best choices, hot choices from yourself, from your personal life, into the material. So that's text analysis going to follow actors forever. And you get better and better and better the more you do it, the more you practice. So what's a hot choice? Like when you say hot choices... Well, if I'm supposed to find somebody that I hate in a scene, so I find somebody in my life that has caused me problems, they could be, could be from 10 years ago. Could be... I used to use... example, I used to use an actor upstaged me in a movie who came on to my girlfriend at the time and was just a miserable human being. I used to use him all the time. It was great using him because I hated him. It was right there. <laughs> and then he died a horrible death. So in death, he still made problems for me. <laughs> but that's a hot choice, finding somebody yes. that you can use. And it might be somebody like right now in your life or something that happened right now in your life that you can bring into a scene and all of a sudden you have a choice that makes you come alive and you don't have to act. It's coming from right with you. you. You also mentioned beats. What are beats? You're playing a moment. The moment is very clear about what you want and then the moment changes and you have to try to find something else. So what I do and what a lot of actors do is where the moment stops, you draw whatever this is, I'm not... A line, yes, yeah, or a little whatever slash. Whatever that thing is, slash, slash. Yeah. right, and then the new moment happens, and that's another beat. So you have a beat, and then you have another beat, and you try to, then one beat follows the other, or if it doesn't, then you have a pause or a transition to try to figure out what you want, and it's all kind of in the writing. The writers don't know how the actors are going to take charge of it. That's our job, but the writers are clear about where it's going, we have to figure out how to make that happen. I've had the pleasure not only of being your classmate, but also being your actor because you directed me. At, at You probably forgot. I did. Many, many years ago. Yeah. You were amazing. And then when you started teaching uh, a few years later, uh, when Roy died, I started taking class with you. Mm -hmm. What has always impressed me, first of all, is that you were a working actor. And then you started to teach. And you taught from a very generous place. Mm, thank you. I've studied with a lot of teachers. But what has always impressed me most about you as a, a teacher is that not only do you give the information and you really help the actor from whatever level they, they're coming mm -hmm. into your class, you really take that part of Roy that Roy used to do and, and pull out the best of that person. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of acting teachers necessarily do that. Mm -hmm. They can be cookie cutters. What Roy was brilliant at and what you're brilliant at is looking at the actor and going, okay, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. This is what you do and so let's work with you um, to get you to be the best you, which, right. which is something you had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. But to be the best you. In my class, what we always did was we did the scene, and then I would give a critique, and then a week later you would come back and do the scene again, and hopefully the notes worked and you took it on your own and now expanded it. And um, as you said, a lot of people are on different levels. So you really, as an acting teacher, you really got to figure out what's going to help this person and not overwhelm them and turn them off. So it's important to know people's personalities and to know what, where they're at in, this, in the process. And I love working with actors who get better and better and better and then you can give them harder critiques and, and really move them along. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. And for me, your co-reading classes w were th what I did when the season was gearing up. Right. Because you got me right in that place, mm -hmm. so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, rusty or whatever. I was able to go into those auditions and give them everything yeah, I and leave nothing on the table. Because you get an audition once every two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. So if you're in an acting class, an audition class, and you, have an, you know you have an audition once a week, 
that muscle is exercised so that you're doing it. And then when you have an audition, it's not like, oh, my God, I have an audition. Oh, it's just like Ken's class where I just did an audition. Now I have to do it here. So I try to make a professional audition in a class exactly like an audition out in the big world. So in the big world, they need you to nail it. You need to get callbacks. My purpose in an audition class is to get people first time to nail it because a lot of the times you only have that one time. In an acting class, you get to work on it a little bit in terms of audition class, but the purpose is to get callbacks first time. And then you gotta, you know, you gotta come in really prepared. Actors need to do the work. What is doing your work in the audition? Know the material, figure out the text analysis, keep working on choices so that you're making the choices that really bring you alive and making sure you're bringing yourself to the audition. You're sitting out there with 10 cookie cutter people in your category looking just like you. Not exactly just like you, nobody looks exactly like you. <laughs> but you're trying to bring your special persona to the reading. That's the only way we get cast. So if we know who we are and we can figure out what is going on in the scene and we're off book and we're ready, nerves are gonna be there. I'm not saying you're not gonna be nervous. But the stakes in the scene take the nerves out because if you're nervous, the character's nervous. If you need something in the scene, the character needs something in the scene and then it comes alive. I definitely recommend his cold reading class. He will make you a better actor and a better person. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. That's all I got for you today. Thanks.